If you don't play to win, then you shouldn't play the game. If you ain't going hard, then just get up out my lane. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio for another edition of Titans Football with Brian Callahan. I'm Mike Keith. Week three of the season is where we are. Titans at home this Sunday against the Green Bay Packers at noon. But before we hit that, we bring in Coach Brian Callahan as we talk about Sunday's loss to the New York Jets by a final score of 24 to 17. Brian, a tough one. A great atmosphere in the stadium. The weather turned out fantastic. It was a battle all day long, and the Titans just came up short. Yeah, we uh, we did a lot of good things uh, in all three phases, and ultimately, right now, we've we've made a couple of critical mistakes in, in our two losses that have ultimately allowed us um, to not win the game. And we need to clean up a couple of those things. But there's so many positives, a lot of things that we're really close on uh, in all three phases that I think um, are going to serve us well as the season moves along and um, again got another chance to come do it at home against with our fans on Sunday but um, disappointed in the result uh, encouraged by what's happening uh, sort of underneath the underneath the current everywhere else on the team right now so that part has been positive as Brian says some good things in the ball game overall let's take a look back here is Sunday's game experience on Titans football with Brian Callahan Titans defensive front against this offensive line of the Jets. They have got to make life visible in the pocket for, as you said, a quarterback that's older than our head coach. He's no better than this, y'all. This game going to be won in the trip. It's time for the dominate for four quarters, not two, four quarters. Let's do it. Three, two, three, one, two, three, three. So both teams have had the ball. Neither team has scored. Titans ready to take the field offensively for the second time. Levis gives, fly sweep, Ridley racing to the corner, inside the five. Gardner, he didn't get it. Touchdown, Titans! Got some speed, speed kills in this league. That was death by speed then. Put it on off. Two Titans turnovers have kept them from building on the advantage. 147 to go in the second quarter. He pumps, he throws back to Allen on a screen to the 10, to the five, to the end zone. Touchdown, New York Jets. Halftime at Nissan Stadium. Your score, Titans 10, Jets seven. Fade throw, going for Brees Hall. He makes an incredible catch in the end zone over Murray for a touchdown. Jets third and 10 from their own 32. Rodgers against the four-man front, under pressure, sacked! Harold Landry again! Yeah, let that center fly to my big man, I like it. Keep it up, keep it up. Hey, keep it up, Tom, you just did it one play. Levis to throw it, stepping up, firing deep downfield, gonna give Ridley a chance, and it is caught! Caught! Touchdown, Titans! Miraculous! Titans want to get him off the field. 17-17 the score. Rodgers going to give Allen a carry on the right side. He's got room to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, into the end zone. His second touchdown of the game. Jets 24, Titans 17. Levis with the blitz are coming. It's picked up. Levis in trouble. Hit, gets away. Here he goes, 20. Levis 15. Levis 10. And Levis down. What a job, Will Levis. High drama in Nashville. Levis looking, trying to keep it alive. Fires towards the end zone, it's dropped. The Jets are gonna come to Nashville and get the win they needed, and the Titans are gonna lose by a 24 to 17 count. Brian Callahan on several players who did a very good job for the Titans. Let's start with Calvin Ridley, my goodness. He's everything we could have hoped for. Um, he's been explosive, he's made huge play after huge play in that game, and everything he does is really, really difficult for a defense to defend. And to see him make 
the down the field catch that we were all waiting for uh, in the first week uh, to see that happen for a touchdown was great. Um, he's a constant source of energy for us, and he does a really, really nice job of creating separation and went at the top of routes. Um, and you can see uh, the benefit of that uh, as he got, hopefully we get him even more yards than he had this past week. Brian Callahan on Harold Landry, who is now in the top 10 in franchise history in quarterback sacks. Just keeps producing uh, at a really high rate. And when you have an edge rusher that can create, have production on the quarterback, um, the way that he's had it over, over the season so far and in his history here, um, impactful. And it, it allows us to get the ball back on offense, uh, and create some fear for the opponents that have to come in here and play against them. Uh, you team him up next to Jeff and you see a lot of really positive results. And um, he's been a very consistent performer. You get the idea too that as this team puts it together, when it all comes together, there's going to be an explosion. That's how I feel. I believe in our process. I believe in the locker room. Um, everything about how our team goes about their business is exactly what you would want. Um, our guys have great detail in practice. Um, we do a really nice job in our study habits. They all like playing football together. Uh, they play with a ton of energy and toughness. And all of those things carry over. And you've seen that we've been in a position to win uh, two games, regardless of all the mistakes that we made to, to lose the games. Uh, both games we've been in until the very end. And this last one, obviously, having three shots at the end zone uh, to, to end it to see if we could potentially tie the game. So all that being said, we've played well enough to be in it. Um, we need to clean some things up and get better. Uh, and I think we will. But I love everything about our team and their makeup and how they go about their business, which gives me a lot of confidence uh, that that tie will turn soon. When we come back, Titans tape on one of the most spectacular plays so far in this NFL season. The head coach will break it down when we continue with Titans football with Brian Callahan presented by SeatGeek. Stay tuned. Titans football with Brian Callahan continues and it's time for Titans tape. On Titans radio, I had a hard time seeing this so I had to watch it again and again, and I've been dying for Brian to show us how the touchdown pass from Will Levis to Calvin Ridley for 40 yards really went down. Take it away, Coach. Sure. This is a this was a playoff of a play we ran in week one uh, where we normally run a curl route with Calvin and a flat route with, T, with Tyler in motion to start, and this guy's clearing out here. So it's just a normal curl-flat combination, and we usually end up throwing the ball here. Well, we felt like they had gotten a little nosy. And so we called up the double move off the same play. And so Calvin pushes vertical and he starts to give a little curl thing and then he's gonna go. And so you get a chance to get it one-on-one -on -one, uh, with Calvin down the field. There was a time in the game where we needed a deep shot, uh, needed something to spark us, a little bit of momentum. Uh, and that's how the play played out. So as you can see here, Tyler goes in motion to start. We expand the flat and we get off coverage. And you can see Calvin's just a quick hesitation and a double move all right, and gets vertical. And really at this point, it's hard to tell who's going to win this route because Sauce is running step for step with them. They're both really, really fast players. Um, but Will does a great job of putting the ball in a place where it can be caught. And it was just an un unbelievable adjustment by Calvin. I also could not see it from where I was standing. And you can see here, great job, great concentration, tracking the ball and finding a way to come Look up with Sauce. it. Look at Sauce. I mean, that's a great football player right there. I'm, I'm in no way making fun. He, he thinks Clark has intercepted it, I think, right? That's what it looks like. And to be honest, I wasn't sure how it looked either when I got down. I was trying to peek down the sideline uh, and to see the, head, the way Calvin adjusted the ball and made the play uh, was pretty remarkable. The other point I want to point out for this play from the other side is, is the pass protection. And it's one of the things that allows these plays like this to work is because of how the offensive line did their job on this play Really, really nice pocket. Will did a great job. He's on time. And you can see we have the edge handled. We have a firm pocket. They bring a pressure off this side. We're sliding right into the pressure. Will finds himself a soft spot in the pocket, allows the play to develop, and delivers a strike down the field. But I'll let you watch it from here, just watching the protection. Dylan gets the one-on-one. -on -one. MPF has a one-on-one. -on -one. We're sliding left, and there's a beautiful pocket to throw from. And the more that we have pockets that look like this, the better off that we're going to be. So really well done up front, allowing us the time and space, and then a really great throw by Will as the ball dropped in in a very strange place, but almost right over the top of Sauce's shoulder and right beneath the safety, he took a bad angle to it, uh, and somehow Calvin made the play. It was pretty remarkable throw and catch, um, but a lot of things went right on that play for that to happen. And you want Will to throw that ball. Absolutely. 
Anytime we get a chance to go one-on-one -on -one down the field with Calvin, regardless of how tight the coverage is, we absolutely want to be aggressive and take that shot. Um, and I thought it was a really, really well-run route, really well-thrown ball. And again, because of the protection, we were allowed the time to push the ball down the field. And this is what Calvin Ridley's all about. This is, this is the Calvin Ridley experience we're learning so far. And uh, it's been pretty remarkable these days to watch how explosive he's been. Um, and when, he com when we complete balls like this, this is how you end up opening up all the other intermediate routes underneath it. I Vote for more of this, please. You and me both. Yes, that's it. You and me both. All right, we've got a lot coming up on this edition of Titans Football with Brian Callahan. After the break, back to school for one Titans tight end. That's right, he's on his way to Franklin. Johnson Elementary, more Titans Football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek, next. You're going to love this feature on Titans Football with Brian Callahan. It's our Seat Geek Sound. Titans tight end Chigakakwo got to visit Johnson Elementary because they made a special video and they had an opportunity to get together for what was an outstanding day. Take a look. Hi Titans, you should visit Ms. Golden's Thursday class. Here's why. Everyone will be excited to see you. We have a class pet. It is a rabbit named Blossom. Oh, What's up guys, Chig here. We're about to go surprise Ms. Golson's third grade class of students. Come with me. Oh, yeah, give me a hug, bring it in, bring it in, bro, bring it in, bro. Which house is the best house? I like peace. Blue represents peace. Do you like video games? Of course I like video games. I love video games. <laughs> I'm playing, I play, I play, I have a PC. I play League of Legends. Well, congratulations, guys, on being the Take a Titan to School winner. Let's see if I can have this. And then we got some, we got some gifts for y'all. Man, all these kids, they wrote me, they wrote me all these sweet letters, all these sweet notes. Thanking me for coming. Tighten up Johnson Elementary in Franklin, Tennessee. What about Chickacoquo? Fits right in with those guys, did a, did a wonderful job. And uh, these players really enjoy these experiences getting, getting to go to schools. Uh, yeah, it's an unbelievable opportunity to use the platform for something really positive. And um, it just makes me think about the, the words that our man Jelly Roll had to say when he came and visited us, talked about the impact that these players have in the community. And I think to watch our guys um, do that, have the impact in the community, relate, be visible and present, uh, I think is an incredible experience for the kids that get to see it um, and for the community as a whole to give back to. Speaking of experiences, football, faith, and family are three things that go together when you talk about the Titans. When Titans Football with Brian Callahan, presented by Seat Geek Returns, will share a story that emphasizes family. Stay tuned. As we welcome you back to Titans Football with Brian Callahan, it's time for our epic Western genuine Titan. We do it every week. Well, the title certainly fits our subject in this case. I don't need to say more. If you feel like you know Titans defensive line coach Tracy Rocker, it's because he's been part of your football world for nearly four decades a college football Hall of Fame defensive tackle at Auburn, a college football assistant coach at multiple SEC schools, including the University of Tennessee, and even a member of the Tennessee Titans staff once before, from 2011 through 2013. We also saw Tracy Rocker quite a bit locally when his son, Kamar, became an All-American pitcher at Vanderbilt. So, 
when Kamar Rocker got the call to make his major league debut in Seattle late last week, Titans fans wondered if the man simply known as Rock would have a chance to be there. Now, Tracy Rocker had resigned himself to the fact that he could not make it to Seattle because the Titans would have a practice on Friday morning. He could get to Seattle on a commercial flight on Thursday, but he wouldn't be able to make it back in time for Friday's practice. And knowing Rock, it's not surprising that he asked no one for the time off. But general manager Rand Carthon and head coach Brian Callahan wanted Tracy Rocker and his wife Lou to be there. They asked Amy Adams Strunk for the special use of a team plane to make the cross-country flight, and she readily agreed. The Texas Rangers had a car waiting to take them to T-Mobile Park, and the couple shared a parent's experience of a lifetime. Tracy Rocker was back in time for practice on Friday, yes, but that is not the big finish to this story. It is time to rock out in Seattle. And that is a fastball strike three called. And Raleigh strikes out looking, and there's the first strikeout in the career of Kamar Rocker. First pitch to Rayleigh, and that one lined out to right field, and back there for Jankowski. He does get out of the jam, and yeah, Mom and Dad, you should be pumped. The four-inning debut of Kamar Rocker made all of the effort worth it for everyone involved. That's a genuine Titan right there, Tracy Rocker and his family. Good job by you and Rand Carthon and the entire organization making that happen. Very special. A uh, really cool opportunity. I had, we, we had talked about it uh, as we found out that Tracy wasn't going to be able to go. Um, and to be able to provide that for him, a huge thanks to, to Amy. Uh, for helping us organize that to get him there because there's only one first major league debut and to not be there to me would be almost a, that's you can't let that happen you have to find a way to make that work and i um, really happy that that Tracy got to go experience that with his son you think I remember talking to him as we told him we'd do it and I it was the most excited I think I've ever seen a, a person get new I mean he was the most excited I've ever seen anybody uh, when he got the news that we were going to take him out there to that game and um, he just thought about all the hours of throwing baseballs with his son and all the work that it took to get there and all his journey from the minors in. To, to be there for that was really special, and uh, I'm really, really happy we could provide that for him. That was fantastic. Well, especially Kamar overcoming arm problems yep. and battling his way to be there. And, I mean, you get to pitch in the big leagues. What an impressive debut. And mom though. and dad are there. It's so great. <laughs> and, and, an, and an impressive debut. Oh, seven, gosh. Seven Struck out strikeouts? seven in four yeah. innings. At uh, – that's how you do it. Yeah. I'm glad he could be there for it. Too. Yeah, Camp Raleigh, pretty good hitter, too. So that's yeah. that's a good one to start with. After the break, Brian Callahan gives us his first thoughts on the upcoming, upcoming opponent, the Green Bay Packers. We're back with more Titans football with Brian Callahan next. The Green Bay Packers are on their way to Nissan Stadium to meet the Tennessee Titans on Sunday. Brian Callahan's first look is presented by Nissan. And you have to start with their outstanding head coach, Matt LaFleur, 60-32 and 32 as the head coach of the Packers since 2019. Yeah, he's done an unbelievable job. I think he's one of the, the bright young offensive coaches in football. Um, he's now an established veteran head coach. Um, he does things the right way. He is a really sharp play caller, and he's done a great job leading that organization. I, I have a ton of respect uh, for him and what he does, and I actually enjoy watching their offensive tape every week to see what they're doing. Um, he's sort of on the cutting edge of offensive football and uh, really, really, really high regard for his ability as an offensive play caller and as a head coach in this league. He got a weapon in free agency this year from the Raiders running back Josh Jacobs, 151 yards rushing last week against Indianapolis. Well, that he, he, he's built for that. That is exactly what Josh Jacobs has done. He's a, he's a volume carry, heavy load, really explosive on top of it, but a physical downhill runner. And they certainly exposed that last week um, to that unbelievable production on the ground um, in Malik's first start there, really leaned on that run game. And it was really impressive to see him run and the physicality he ran with. Final 30 seconds, we have to mention Rashawn Gary, who's become one of the best pass rushers in the NFC. Yeah, his his production, his disruption of the quarterback in the pocket, um, are are he he 
really grew into his role, and he's really become an impact player for that defense. And um, I'm sure they're going to look to try to disrupt our pocket the, as best they can with him because he's he's one of those guys that you have to account for really on every play, on every series, and know where he's at because um, he is a force on the edge. Green Bay Packers plus four in turnover ratio. That's the best in the NFC. They've played well on both sides of the ball. They'll come to Nashville at one and one to meet the Titans. Kickoff set for 12.02 on Sunday. And we'll be on the air with Titans Radio on our flagship station, 104.5 The Zone, at 11 o'clock with Titans Countdown. For Brian Callahan, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us for Titans Football with Brian Callahan. We'll see you Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Good night, everybody.